Hey, did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? It was solid. I'll tell you it was successful. Good, good. What it about was you, H? Great. Well, I was in San Francisco. Okay. Oh, and the Turkey Bowl. That's right. That's yeah, right. The Turkey shout out, Bowl. Shout out to Balboa. Man. City League champions again. Man, a tradition you know. unlike any other. The Turkey Bowl. We love it. Uh, we love it. Welcome to the Cover Cal High Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Vanderbrook, alongside Tyler Flipson, Adrian Soriano. So, section title games in the books. So we make our switch over to NorCal's, but let's give you some scores, catch you up. So starting off with the NCSD1 bracket, Pittsburgh winning its fourth consecutive NCSD1 title, beating San Ramon Valley 35 to 28, while St. Francis is able to capture the CCSD1 title, beating Los Gatos 27 to 7. And then we have what I'm going to call Arcada and Miramonte, where Arcada did get it done by all of one touchdown, 28 to 21. And then we have Redwood and American Canyon, where American American Canyon surmounted uh, Redwood 35-28. And uh, like we said when we opened the show, Balboa City League champions 26-7 over the Lincoln Mustangs. So, you know, shout out to uh, Fred Velasquez and all those boys, man, you know. Kind of got revenge from their early regular season loss against Lincoln. Um, and then Amateur Valley, I was here, I was at this game in Dublin. Um, 42 18, Amateur Valley over Bishop O'Dowd. So, Amateur Valley, first ever C- uh, NCS champions. So, congrats to them. And, Jake, I'm going to hand it off to you. One of the best rivalries, Campo Acalanes. Yeah. Man, let me tell you, that's always a fun rivalry. And Acalanes. Back-to-back section champs for those Dons, beating Campolindo 20-17. And congratulations to Moreau Catholic, winning its first-ever section title, beating Ferndale 21-19. And they were popping bottles. They were so, popping uh, bottles. Spark- it was cider. Spark- it was <laughs> cider. <laughs> they were popping bottles. Yeah, no, that was really cool to see, though. Uh, and how about Leland? Leland taking down Sequoia 27-21. I know that one was every bit of exciting. <laughs> I was not in the action with you guys on Friday and Saturday night, so I love keeping up all the scores. That's uh, all right. And that, that was great seeing that. And then Sonoma Valley and St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, 51-7. to All right. Numbers. And, <laughs> and this was – so these last two games were at San Jose City College last uh, Saturday. I was there all day. Um, so we'll start off with Berlin Games, take it our prep. The Gators, 21-10 to 10 over Berlin Games. So they're going on to NorCal's. Again, congratulations to um, Mark Grieb, who was the former quarterback at um, the San Jose Sabercats from the Arena Football League back in the day. And uh, we're going to talk about this game. Palma Wilcox, Wilcox, 35-26 over Palma and Jake. Let's talk about this game. Weren't wasn't Wilcox down at the half? Yes, they were. They were down twenty to seven. So I, I think I'm pretty sure Kai Imahara, their starting quarterback, was hurt. So he didn't start the game. They had um Adrian Garcia. I hope I got I got his name right. So he was the quarterback in the first half. And you know, I didn't really expect Wilcox to come out of the gates kind of cold. Right, I mean, Palma dominated the clock in the second quarter. Ten, like they had the ball for ten minutes in the second quarter. Ten minutes, and oh. you know, twenty. They were up twenty to seven, and and Paul Rosa made the adjustment of the season. He put his son Braden at quarterback, and Palma had no answer. Wow, did they run the? Did he throw the ball at all? Or is mainly just turned nope. into wildcat, just quarterback power. Yeah, yes. it was just... But you have the veer. It doesn't matter. I mean, with Wilcox, that, I'm shocked he didn't do that sooner. I mean, it just I know. makes all the sense. That offense runs through him anyways. So might as well put him at the helm, right? Yeah, I mean, when you when it comes to halftime, though, you got to come up with a game plan and True. refresh, reset. And that's what Wilcox was able to do. Now, if Palma, you know, if I were them, you know, when you're leading by halftime and it's a championship game, sure. you know, the mentality is you can't just coast your way to the finish line. No. You have to find another gear to get the job done. And unfortunately for Palma, they weren't able to do that. And Wilcox, they were able to make the second half adjustments. And Braden Rosa, let me tell you, two rushing touchdowns. I believe he had uh, just over 200 yards uh, for rushing. I mean, most of those came in the second half. 
Yeah, so when you make adjustments like that, that just shows you that, that you can handle adversity, you're willing to make the adjustments, and right there, the Wilcox Chargers, they got the job done, and they're moving on the NorCals. And, and, and not only that, you know, Wilcox defensively played much better in the second half. And, you know, for Palma, I don't know. They, they threw the ball like five or six times in the first half, not one incompletion. The first incompletion happened in the second half, and they got the ball to start the second half. They were like, if they score here. That's like, a bit head it, scratching, it, this if is, you ask me. I don't know what it was, but hey, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, it's all about who can make the adjustments, like you said, right. and who can handle the pressure. And, you know, the pressure kind of started mounting for Palma, and, and, and unfortunately, they just. Uh, Kind of came up short. And so. Aravalos, uh, Jeremiah Aravalos for Wilcox had two INTs. So and that, that was big. That was huge. So Wilcox, they're going to be going up against 12 Bridges uh, Saturday. Yes, right. Saturday for, for a NorCal title and to punch their ticket to States. So we jump over to SRV Pittsburgh. This was a great game. This Ooh. was a great game. You know, San Ramon Valley put up a huge fight. And at one point, they were leading at the half. It was 21-20. Pittsburgh made those second half adjustments, though. Let me tell you. So I think what was key, though, was that Pittsburgh was able to get enough stops when it was needed most. And what was key for this was that Rat Thompson had two interceptions in the red zone out of his oh, three no. picks. Yep. So that was, you know, that, that is a bit frustrating, you know, when you're driving the, the ball down the field efficiently and, it looks like everything is going your way and you have a, you have some costly uh, turnovers where, you know, that could decide the ball game. And those were some of the huge factors. You eliminate those turnovers and maybe you have three points. You're still in the ball game yeah. for those results. But Marley Alcantara was outstanding. What a year he's put together. I mean, he has really like, I put not only Pittsburgh has been a well-established team, but really put, his name and the school's name on the map and yep. getting attention unlike any other. Seriously, he has been doing, and especially, I mean, just speaking on the obvious, he's not the tallest quarterback, you know, and, nope, and no. the status quo is, you know, the taller the better, but he's proven that not always the case at a high, high level right. going against good defenses in a high powered offense. So absolutely. Yeah. San Ramon Valley did a great job stopping the run. They did a great job. So you got to make adjustments and Pitt was able to do that. Alcantara was slinging the ball, all throughout this game, he had four passing touchdowns. He looked really good out there. He looked really sharp, and, you know, he was one of the big reasons why Pitt was able to get the job done to win its fourth consecutive NCSD1 title. And we can't forget about Jaden Hudson. Jaden Hudson as a DB is dangerous. He is vicious. He had two INTs. Um, he, he had one that could have been a pick six, but he did fumble it. But still, Jaden oh, no. Hudson had a lights out game um, for Pittsburgh. And he is going to be going up against a very tough receiver from Folsom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very tough receiver. His name is Jamison Powell, three star receiver out of Folsom, uh, has multiple offers, Big Ten uh schools like Oregon, Washington, so schools like that. And you know, with Folsom, it all starts with Ryder Lions. Yep. Everything starts with Ryder Lions. I mean, he's a five star quarterback for a reason. When you have over 40 plus touchdown passes, you have like 12 rushing touchdowns as well. I mean, he he is one of the best quarterbacks in NorCal. No question about it. So what does Pitt have to do to get the rider? Well, what they're going to have to do is that they need to contain him. So I feel like Folsom in this game, they're going to spread all their receivers out because Folsom likes to pass. Yep. I mean, sure, they can run the ball with Carter Jackson. They will do that. But if Folsom wants to take advantage of Pittsburgh, I feel like Folsom, they need to spread the ball out. Pittsburgh needs to contain that, though. That's going to also be a factor. And can they get the rider? I think this is also going to be a big game for Juju Walls as well. Exactly. Well, that's actually what I was going to say is that my two cents on it is that I think it's the pass rush that matters. 
is you have to be able to get to the quarterback. And I'm not looking for an all-out blitz every time. You know, call your stunts. Go ahead and apply some pressure on Ryder. Because if he has too much time to pass, your secondary can only do too much, so much no matter how good they are. Yep. So for the big question for Pittsburgh is, can they stop Ryder? They're going to have to do everything they can to contain him. I mean, he put, I mean, this offense put up 41 points in their uh, Sac Joaquin uh, title win over Oak Ridge. So it was 41, nothing. The final Oak Ridge is, I mean, Oak Ridge, they're they're a good team. Oak Ridge is a good team, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I guess we can sum up, sum it up this way. And uh, let me pull uh, a chapter out of Michael Strahan's book when he did that America's game with the Giants back in, like, forever. If they don't get to Ryder Lions, they will not win this game. They have to get to Ryder Lions. Simple as that. And offensively, did, did Marley throw a pick last week? Marley did not throw a so pick. He has still he thrown has not thrown all a pick. season? Nah, I don't think so. That's what I was going to bring up is that, that that's another factor of why he's as good as he is, how smart he is with the yeah. football. If I if my memory serves me right from the last set of stats I looked at for him, he has yet to throw an interception all season. Right. right. And and that's also key. So Pittsburgh, can they stop Ryder? And then for Folsom, I think the big question for them is, can they stop the run? And I'm sure they're doing yeah. everything they can to look over that SRV pick game last week to see what they did to stop Cersei and to stop Bo. So I feel like if Folsom stops the run, this is going to be a, a very interesting game. Yeah. Very interesting. I I think, um, I don't think it's going to be offensive fireworks. I think both teams are going to, you know, I think both teams are going to get off to a slow start. And when you have that, I mean, it's NorCal. It's a big exactly. game, obviously. And there's going to be thousands of people at this game. Yep. Who's at this game? I'm at this game. Uh-oh. There's going to be a lot of people. And, you know, with a big game like this, Folsom will travel, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm, oh yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. They will travel. And Pitt, you know they'll always be there. It's not going to be offensive fireworks. It's going to be a chess match. It's it going to be a yeah. lot of strategic moves, and every point matters. You know, every play matters because it's, you know, it's not going to be high scoring. It's you, uh, from an offensive perspective, you have to capitalize on every opportunity that's presented in front of you. Right. And, 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 you know, playing at Pittsburgh, I mean, that's definitely a, an advantage, right? Last that's year, huge. That, that is, is huge big. for Pittsburgh. Yep. You know, last year, Pitt had to travel to Folsom, and it was a three-point game, you know. And I think a couple years ago, I covered Pitt Folsom, right, at Pitt. So, you know. Oh, Pitt yeah, Destroying not, was there. Destroying was there. Shout out to Destroying. He should come back to Pitt. Hey, you know what? He might. He that's might. your buddy. You should hit him up. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Pittsburgh has never beaten Folsom. Is this finally going to be the, the week? Is this finally going to be the game? You know, we cover Pitt, so of course I'm going to root for Pitt. You know, I think they're... They this is, this is get the point done. when it comes to NorCal, we always root for our Bay Area team. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think Pitt's going to pull it out in the end. This might be a 10-point game in the end, I, th- I feel like. I feel like Folsom will have the ball late, and, you know, they're going to try to make a play, and Pittsburgh's defense is going to... um. Turn the ball over in the should, end. Should be that's an interesting prediction. one. This game will be played at Friday, 7.30 p.m. Yep, that's kickoff, right. Off, and it's going to be our Crumble Cookies game of the week. Another interesting game. Well, before you go, I I, I, rec- I recommend going to Sonics before um going to pay. <laughs> Sonic? <laughs> that's right. There's a Sonics like a mile away. It's, wait, are you saying Sonics? Like there's multiple? Sonic. There's an, it's singular. Yeah, Sonics. No, you're Sonic. putting an S on the end. There's no oh, S on the end. It's okay, Sonic. Singular. Sonic. Okay. okay. Right. Just, I'm glad we got that covered. <laughs> anyway. Another Moving great on. game. Yes. I think this is going to be an amazing game. At the Mac House, Amador Valley McClymans. T squared, baby. That's all I got to say. Man, let me tell you. Mac with home field advantage. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. And they they have that big divot that's like on the, oh, this, right? That's like near the field. I mean, you can tell that's home field advantage. You know, the Mac House is always going to show their support. And this is going to be a very interesting game. And the big question for Mac can they stop Tristan Tia? It's a million and, dollar question. You know, it's so interesting. They didn't really pass the ball last week. And they didn't really pass the ball against Windsor the week before. They ran the ball. And they ran the ball really well. And again, Bishop O'Dowd defensively, they're good. And they could not really stop the running game. 
I, I think for McClyman's in, in order to stop Tristan Tia, I think to slow him down and s slow down that high-powered offense for them is time of possession. Control the clock. McClyman's is able to hold on to the ball and exactly. keep Tia and that offense off the field, and but still score, of course. Now, I, I'm not saying hold the ball for you know an eight-minute drive to end up punting, right? But we got to be able to generate points on top of that. But time of possession, if we're giving – you know, uh, Amador Valley, minimal time on the field of that offense. That will be the difference maker for them. Yeah, I, I think, you know, looking into this matchup, I think Mac has the advantage at the line of scrimmage. You think so? I really yeah. do. I really do. And I think Mac, what they're going to do is implement the run. Sharky Tamale is going to get a lot of carries in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets 30, 35 carries. Wow. I would not be surprised. Quick and game. If, and if Burrell Staples needs to make a play with his arm, he will. He yeah. will. So, and he can also run the ball if he needs to make a play with his legs. So, I think Mac has the advantage at the line of scrimmage. Has Amador seen a team like this yet? I'm trying to think um, if they've had an opponent like I, Mac. Kalanis, I mean, listen, McClyman's just the swagger and the physicality. It's sure. there, right? Uh, we can never count out McClyman's. I don't care if they're in the Oakland League. You can never count them out. I think they're going to win this game. Spoiling, putting it out there. You, you guys both I are taking back. I think. That's funny. Oh, I didn't pick. No, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't pick. pick you didn't oh, okay. pick any team. He said they're I'm picking. Okay, I'm right. picking McClymans, man. You'd never count this team out. The experience factor with Michael Peters. He's been here so many times, and sure. they're playing at home. You know. And with his son Marcus Peters Marcus is over there, there and you know, helping out the squad. I think when you have veterans that have been in their shoes before, that pays dividends in the long run. Exactly. And, and I think going into this game, Mac has the advantage from an experience standpoint and home field advantage. So I think this game is going to be very close, though. Absolutely. It will be but very close. It's going to be a dogfight till the very end. You know, again. <sighs> Amateur Valley, Amateur Valley. Some some of their fans, they were uh, asking me. I don't think I made a prediction last week from Amateur Valley Bishop, but I don't think I made a prediction. You didn't. So they were asking me, "Hey, did you make a prediction?" I, I didn't make a prediction. So I'm making a prediction. It's gonna be McClymans, and you know, shout out to Amateur Valley. Shout out to Tristan, man, a very very nice young man. You know, said hi to me when he saw me on the field. But Tristan's a baller. Tristan is a baller. You. Don't get me wrong. Tristan mm. is a baller, but. It's just the experience. I will always lean towards experience over the talent. Like, Amador Valley you know. has never had a season like this exactly. till so, now. And they're and, in uncharted waters right now. Right. So, you know, but, hey, you know, I'm they're, jealous they're of already, They're already making waves. I mean, yes, they were in a very tough division, but, you know, that tough division prepared them to make a run in D2. Exactly. Um, I'll say it. I have no shame and no doubt in the fact that it's going to be Amador by one. I'm telling you, it's going to be a small and margin. It's going to be a PAT play. That's all it's going to be. It will come down to a PAT. will make all the difference. I think Amador, like you said, yes, Mac has all this experience, and that's why they are as good as they are from the coaching standpoint, the players and whatnot. I think that they are a darn good Toter Tate and uh, Tate <laughs> team. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anyway, with that being said, I botched that one. Point is, is that I really see Amador Valley able to get it done with the way they have been running all season, this way to this caliber to this level. This is the perfect matchup for them. And with that being said, I'm taking Amador by one. I'm I'm gonna say Mac going into this game is more physical. Yes, I think they're gonna be more physical in this one. But I think Amador Valley in this one, I think they're gonna control the clock. Okay. Uh -uh. That's all you're gonna get from me. Okay. Well, you know, you know what? I, I just lit a fire under Amateur Valley uh, this week. I know they're gonna watch the podcast, so you know. Hey, hopefully, we just want a good game, man. I mean, this is our. I think last this is week. gonna be a great game. Yeah. At but the Mac House. That's a, that's also a, a Friday 7:30 p.m. kickoff. Um, yep. All, yeah. all the games are all the good games are on Friday. For us, they really are, us. yeah. Because yeah. Uh, Grand Saint Francis, that's going to be, be a, a, game, a yeah. very good game. Uh, then Leland, Leland, <laughs> Leland and Moreau Catholic. You know, man. I asked you if yeah. you wanted that Folsom Pit game, and you, nah, you wanted Leland, Leland Moreau. Nah, give me Leland Moreau, man. Okay. You know, I mean, listen, 
uh, my sister, she's going to be at that Moreau game. She takes pictures for the team. And, you know, Kelly King Jr., shout out to Kelly Jr., you know, finally a CCS champion, you know, first title that, that as a head coach, right? He's won a CCS title with Milpitas when he was coaching under um, his dad. So, yep. you know, shout out to Kelly King. And, oh, whoa, the thing just came out. Okay, but oh, that's lovely. Wow, I think it's back on now. It's uh, it's back on. It's back on. All but right, anyways, on. let's go to the football poll. Um, that's right. Some changes, not a lot. Yeah. Well, all right. Go through the list. All right. Well, I mean, they us out. Let's let me just say this: they us out. I don't care if they lose to Modern Day next week. They us out will be our number one team. There's no changing that at all. Same thing with Pittsburgh. If they beat Folsom this week, I don't care what happens at State next week, they will be our number two team. Now, St. Ignatius, they are playing um, Central. So they're Central traveling down to Central in Fresno. Fresno. So they're our number three team. So we'll see what happens there. St. Francis, number four, CCS Division One champions. Like we mentioned earlier, yep. they're um, hosting Grant. San Ramon Valley. Season officially over for the Wolves, so, you know, a little bit sad. We don't get to see Marco Jones on the field again. So, they did lose to Pitt. But we did see him on the podcast. We did. That's right. If you haven't watched that episode, make sure you go back and go watch it. I, I got to yeah. watch it. Tyler and I had a blast with Marco. Yeah. You know, I, I saw the thumbnail, and he was wearing Jordans. I'm like, hell yeah, man. Well, I'm a Jordan guy. He's got so. that swag. That's right. And uh, I kind of like the hairdo. I kind of like it. Yeah. All right, but <laughs> moving on. Uh, Wilcox up to number six, beat Palma, and now they're traveling to 12 Bridges. Such a shame we can't get that game, but it's just Saturday night. You know, it's not really ideal for us. Unfortunately. 12 Bridges, that's a new school. Like It's a, few a brand years ago. new school yeah. with, um, it's in Lincoln, so it's like a two hour drive. You, I guess you could say you'd have to cross a lot of bridges to cover that that's game. Crazy. That's right. You open up a new school, and next thing you know, you guys got a section title. Well, I think, you know, Wilcox has to uh, cross 13 bridges to win. So I think we'll Tyler see. was looking for a mic. That was a good right joke. There. I got Mr. Producer Van behind yeah, the camera. Yeah, Nikon had me. Yeah, you know, I, from Nikon. I got no one else. Uh, <laughs> who knows what he's doing on that computer. Over I there. But go on. <laughs> well, Cardinal Newman, number seven. You yeah. know, so we'll see what happens. They may go down. We'll see. Um, Amador Valley up to eight now. They beat Bishop O'Dowd, and uh, again, like we mentioned, they're playing McClymans. Auckland is at number nine, defeating Keppel in the 20 to 17. And I know we didn't talk about this, but you know, uh, last second missed field goal for Keppel in yeah. so, and sealed it for Auckland. And they're actually going to travel all the way to Monterey Peninsula College to take on Carmel. Oh, that's an interesting that's game. That is a very, very, very long drive. Yeah. I tell you, I mean that's probably a longer drive than um, when Mac had to travel to Aptos a couple years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was at that game, so like, like that's why I said you yeah. never count out Mac. And uh, Los Gatos, number ten, season over. Okay. Lost to uh, St. Francis. Okay. And that's your uh, football S top ten. So the number one question that I have for you. Okay. So. Okay, McClymans is playing some wonderful football. That's right. They went on to win the Silver Bowl, as expected. They dominated the OAL. If they win this game over Amador Valley, are they in the poll? Yes. Where would you put them? I will probably put them at number eight. And So if Mac wins, then Los Gatos drops out. Right. Amador Valley will be number 10. So there you go. If Mac beats Amador Valley... They will be the, our number 18 next week. Okay. Right? I mean, I cannot put Mac over Cardinal Newman. Tyler, what do you think about that? I, I'm with it. I'm with it. I mean, it's also, I think, to drop Amador that fast, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, they're number eight. Yeah. You know, drop so I mean, they're, not, they're not dropping completely out. Over they're just number 10. I mean, I don't know. That, that's the same thing. With, well, let's see what happens with Exactly. You can't Aquala, sleep right? on the reigning state champs. Of course. And a lot. And exactly. We have a lot of Friday action to unfold here. So we shall see. Well, I mean, listen, Amador Valley could be number nine, right? Amador Valley number nine. Aqualot is number 10. You know, again, I just cannot put those three teams over Cardinal Newman just, just because of the body of, of work. That they had this season. I know they're not playing anymore, but you know, they were in the NCS D1 bracket and they played really, really tough teams. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
that placement kind of it's, it's still it's still getting them all, all over the hump right now. Otherwise, fair pull. Tyler, can I see that football, please? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 no, come on. What is wrong with <laughs> we're gonna go right to hoops? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that means football. Oh, wow. Their football's over. We're oh, going over basketball. Okay. Football's ah, out. Okay. Making the transition. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Girls basketball top 10 preseason poll. Adrian, run through the list. All right. Well, I'm gonna say the same thing. Uh, like I said, when we started this podcast with football, no one, if well, Midi will be the number one team until somebody beats them in the Bay Area. And <laughs> let's be honest, no disrespect to other teams, but dude, Midi is stacked again. They're, they're probably going to make the. How'd that work out for you when you said that about Sarah and football? Well, this is, this is a little bit different because mm. uh, Midi always has. Great talent. Yes, McKenna's back. They do. McKenna's back. No more Morgan Shelley. But, but they have but Devin Cosgriff. The so, latest addition right. added to the Monarchs. And they have a great bench and great players. So your Midi is our number one team, right? Carondelet will begin our pull at number two. Salesian, number three. Ooh, okay. Oakland Tech, number four. Oh, another now, physical I don't care team. what happened last year with. The in edu- whatever, they are. They have a really, really good team. Uh, I think Terry Russell, Jai Johnson is. I mean, how do you stop the Twin Towers? They are tall and they're talented and they're physical. Right? Yep. It's just the the Oakland swagger, right? Yeah. Um, Pinewood at number five. Um, hey Tyler, you you'll be covering Pinewood this week. Lost Gatos yeah. Pinewood. Yeah, so yes, go. I will. That's our Chick Fil A game. That's I Chick-fil-A believe game. it is. Great. That's right. Yeah. So. On top, we saw a lot of Pinewood at the Riker Center too when we we're doing our interviews. They've been there working out. Yep. They've been there. Yeah. yeah. I They've wonder been around. why that is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't that I don't know, but looking forward to seeing that yeah. game. Yeah. Hey, say um, I'm pretty sure Robert will tell you. Say hello to uh Doc for him. So is that go. guy a big deal? Does, is, yes, has he, been he is a legendary coach here. Big deal. Doc Shepler. The master of um, mastering the three-point shot. Now, was it the delivery of my sarcasm or your ability to hear it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it could be both. Okay. We'll see what happens. Anyway, moving along. <laughs> right. I'll make sure that I say hi to uh, Don. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop O'Dowd, number six. And they you, did lose Devin. So yeah, no. you wonder what interested. that team is going to be looking like now. And, well, you can ask the same question uh, about Amador Valley, oh, not Amador Valley, sorry, sorry, San Ramon Valley. Yep. They will start at number seven. I mean, they lost. They're a very, very young team, right? And Sierra think- Chambers is gone, Sierra I believe. Chambers is gone, yeah. um, but they do have a transfer from Monta Vista. She's ineligible right now. I think she'll be... From she'll Danville, be to Danville to Danville. Just, you know, just a couple miles away. Yep. Um, but I think she will be eligible in January. Okay. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be really interesting to see... Uh, what San Ramon Valley does, and I'm pretty sure Aubrey's gonna um, have all San Ramon Valley games. So, <laughs> you know, what's up, Coach? <laughs> um, Sacred Heart Cathedral number eight. Uh, they're a good team, right? Always have good talent over there at Sacred Heart Cathedral. Such a shame they play in the same league as Midi. So, <laughs> um, Auckland is number nine. Another good team. Yeah, an another good team. Yeah, right. They got they got some great additions. Uh, Dulce Vale is she still there? I believe she is. So. Uh, Cal Poly commit, um, outstanding shooter. Yeah, outstanding shooter. A uh, great rim protector. I think when you have a, a player like her, I think you know Akalines is going to be dominating that league. No question yeah. about it. Maybe I mean maybe Miramonte has. I mean but we'll see. But even when we'll I see. covered them, it it, it was, wasn't as close. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean Akalines is good. Yeah, they're very right. good. You know, um, and number ten, Saint Ignatius. Again, same Ignatius. thing with um yeah, Sacred Heart Cathedral. Good. Yeah, same thing with Sacred Heart Cathedral. You know, they always have good t- uh good talent on that team. Uh, Coach Maya, I think she's still there. You know. She, she a does a coach. great job. She does a fantastic job. Again, such a shame <laughs> they're in the same league as Mitty. And, you know, Mitty's probably going to kill everyone in the West Catholic League just because of, of the talent. They uh, have, you know, so. what it's literally going to be, it's going to be it's going to be close for the first three, four minutes. And then Mitty's going to say, that's, that's enough, enough for you guys. You. But, hey, Bye-bye. you know, what? You know it, it'll be interesting. I know we're still 
about a month plus away, but Sacred Heart Cathedral and St. Ignatius, that girls game yep. at the Chase Center. So, quick question for you. Yes. Cardinal Newman's not on this team. Keep in mind, they won an NCSD they one did. title. They did. Why are they not on the list? Well, I think they lost. Uh, who was that Brazilian player that they had last year? So, she graduated early. Okay. I think. So, she's going to, like, North Carolina Oh. Don't, don't quote me on that. I I, I just heard that on, on X. So I'm not sure if that's 100%. But X going to give it to you. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, Cardinal Newman, Cardinal Newman is still a good team. You know, Coach Myrtle, you know, great coach. They You're always right. have great talent. <laughs> we, what we is have, going on? We have chaos. Catastrophe has uh -oh. oh, boy. But we have a, a mobile mic down. What is going oh on? We're on the move. What in the, what in the <laughs> world is going on? Uh, you but, might have to you, hold you, that. What <laughs> in the <laughs> world is going on? Home stretch, boys. Lock in. I'm All right, fine. but hey, but like I said, Coach Myrtle, good team, uh, good coach. They have, they always have a, a good team out there in in Santa Rosa. So, we'll see. Now, boys basketball, we don't have a poll yet, right? We're still waiting for football, but um, we will expect Reardon on that list, Salesian oh, on that yeah. list. Oh yeah, you gotta um, throw Salesian. You know there. what? Hey, big tech. Since since yep. Tech. I will Oakland Tech will oh. be on this list uh, as Oakland Tech, well. They put on a show against Moreau Catholic yeah. this week. And, and Moreau Catholic, I feel like they're going to be a, another good, legitimate team they might be in, in the, the top They 10. might be in the poll. Kelton Hampton's back. That's right. He is back with Moreau. And then Oakland Tech, you know what they're going to be doing. They exactly. got some guys out there, in, uh, which in, features our Darius Grayson. That's the first name oh I think. Who led goodness. the Bulldogs to an outstanding run to capture a state title. I think that was a game of the year basketball for me that I got to cover was yeah. Ohio and Tech last year. There's uh, always a good vibe. Meeting. There's always a good with vibe. Damian Lillard teams. there. Yeah. I mean, it was just a vibe. I've never heard a more loud and packed gym. The more oh, exciting game. That was, I well, get chills thinking about that we'll game. We'll be covering that game. Absolutely. Yeah. Got and to. Whoever and then, has and, that and game. You met Damian Lillard. I did? That's yeah, I got a yeah. selfie with the guy. You did know? you know cool. I went to school with his cousin? Did you? did you really? In college, yeah. Wow. Yeah, with one of his cousins. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. Cool. Damien, if you're listening. Graduated with him as well. Yeah. Very but, nice. Um, I think Mitty will also be in the list, most likely. Yep. And you know what? Here's a sleeper team already Ignacio Valley. And Ooh. we will be covering Salesian Ignacio and, Valley this and, week. And, and, and really quick, you cannot sleep on Doherty Valley. They have Jalen Stokes now. Exactly. Who oh, from I forgot Dublin. about Doherty Valley. And um, yep. I forgot I forgot his name for Doherty Valley, the head coach. I'm so sorry. Mike Hansen. Mike Hansen. Oh, my. That was so yep. bad on me. You know, hey, Doherty Valley, man. De La Salle as well. Oh, Alec Blair. We love, I can't wait. Oh. We love the transitions, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, basketball is back. And it's safe to say, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me oh, get no. the papers. So you Ben covered. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. We'll see you next week. <laughs>